Today we are making a dynamic journal from scratch. There's also a free link in the description. Now this dynamic journal idea comes directly from my second brain template headquarters. There's also a link in the description to that. The idea is that in our weekly journal, we will see all the tasks that we've done in the past week. This has been a game changer, as the journal is now not just a static word document, it's actually showing us the relevant data so we can properly reflect on the week. Part one, we'll go through the templates, which yes, you can download 100% free, linked in the description. And part two, we will build it from scratch. Now my headquarters template takes this to the next level. It's built with a time tracker, so you can see not only how much time you spent on tasks, but it breaks down the tasks into different life buckets and projects. That way you know how much time you're actually spending on different areas in your life, on specific projects, and there's just a ton of other stuff I cannot recommend it enough. By the way, the Headquarters Templar also now comes with a free bonus of my 50 favorite daily journal prompts as well. Again, that is linked in the description. So let's have a look through this template. There are four main aspects to it. We have a task list, we have a calendar view, we have a move the needle section, and here we have the dynamic journal template. So let's have a look at the dynamic journal. I will create a new one here. Click on plus and click on weekly journal. And here on this dynamic journal, we can see a list of every single task that we've completed this week. So these are only the tasks that have actually been completed. And what we can do in here is an exercise that I absolutely love, which is moving the needle. So what I'll do is look through this list and let's say that the cold emailing of cover letters, that really had an impact on my life. It actually got my foot in the door and let's say I got a job interview somewhere. So what I can do here is change this status from done to move the needle. And then let's say that making this client presentation move the needle as well. It got me this client, it helped me build my business, yada yada. What I'm doing here is labeling stuff as move the needle if it's had a really big impact on my life. And then in here, I have a simple question looking at the tasks I completed above. Do I feel like I achieved enough? In the template, you can add as many questions or as little questions as you want into your weekly journal. You can make this a weekly journal. It can be a monthly journal. I go into that in the build. So you can see now in the calendar view that these have now been changed to move the needle. And if I scroll down to the move the needle section, here we can see a list of every single task that I've ever done that has moved the needle. This is so important to know as you can pick up on the patterns on stuff that you are doing that actually has an impact. So you know what you should be focusing on and what you should be doing more of. And then lastly, we have a simple task list. Here you can add any task, blah, blah. And it gets removed from this view if I change the status to done, it gets removed. So this is just a simple task list of all the tasks that you haven't completed yet. Okay, part two, let's build this dynamic journal from scratch. So what we're going to do here is forward slash data and we're going to click on table view. So click on that. And then here we're going to create a new database. So this database is going to hold all of our tasks, all of our to do's. So I'm just going to call this to do. And we're going to keep it pretty simple today. We won't have too many properties. We're going to have this tags property, uh, which gets automatically created when you create a new database. But just in case you're not seeing that, I'm just going to show you, you're going to click on the plus and then you're going to scroll down and you're going to click on select. We're going to call this status. Now this status column is going to be very simple. We're only going to have two options. We're going to have done and we're going to have moved the needle. So I'll click on create move the needle. Then this move the needle, I can click on that. Click on these three dots to change the color. So let's make it blue. So this is a pretty basic task list. We're just seeing it as a list view. So what we can do is right click on table and rename. And we're going to call this task list where we're just seeing it as an actual list. I'll give it this icon. And then what I'm going to do here is right click on task list and do duplicate. Now for this one, let's view this as a month. So I'm just going to write month and then click on layout here. And we are going to click on calendar. Click on that and click on the cross here. As you can see, it looks quite squished. So what we're going to do is go up to these three dots, click on full width. So this and this is the same database. We're just seeing it as different views. We're seeing it as a list and a calendar view. Now, as you can see in the list view here, this date column has been added. That's because for a calendar to exist, you have to have a date. Otherwise, the tasks don't know when to actually show up on this calendar. So we can just move this date property here to the side. I think it makes most sense on the left here. And then let's fill this in with random thing. And if I add today's date, click on that, you can actually see it's now going to appear in here, random thing on Friday the 5th. So in here, you can see the status is done. Why are we not seeing that on here? Well, we need to change the setting for this calendar view to show the other property. So to do that, we're going to click on these three dots. We're going to click on properties. 
Then here we can see the status. We're just going to click on this little eyeball icon, click on that, and now you can see that it is showing done. Now, typically for a to-do list, I would actually be using the checkbox instead. I would be using this property. But for today, we only want to have another status of move the needle and done. It doesn't make sense to have another column of move the needle because then we're just adding another property when we could just be using one. The goal for me with databases is to use as few properties as possible. If you have to fill out a ton of different properties, it's going to be very overwhelming to work with. Now in headquarters, I do have a few properties, but they all serve very specific functions. And if I could make something into one property instead of having it as two properties, then I did that. It's the same idea for my publish OS template. If I could make it as one property instead of two, then I did that in there as well. It's just less cognitively overwhelming in here because if you have 15 different properties to do a very simple thing like add a task, you're just going to get overwhelmed and not actually use the system. So now we have a very basic task list and we have a month view. Now, most likely in the task list, you don't want to see tasks that are complete. It doesn't make sense. It's going to be very overwhelming if you're seeing every task that you've done in the past. So what we're going to do here is click on filter. We're going to click on status. And here, what we're going to say is where the status is empty. Because if it's moved the needle, if a task has moved the needle, then you've already completed it. And if it's done, then obviously it's complete. So we're going to change it from status is, and then click in empty. Now we could have done this in other ways. We could have said is not and ticked in done and moved the needle. We could have done it in a, a bunch of different ways, but ideally I just like to say is empty because then if we add any other statuses over time, let's say did not move the needle, did not move the needle, then we would have to go into the settings and change that again. So it's just adding another step, which we don't want. So now in our task list, you can see it is empty. It is only stuff that we haven't done. Now, honestly, if you're new to Notion, a setup like this will be so easy to use and so effective that I cannot recommend this enough. Right now, you might have a task list in your notes app and then you might be using a calendar. The goal here is to have your task list as your calendar. It's the same thing. Long-term subscribers know that I say your day is your to-do list. It's the same thing. You don't want to separate your calendar and your to-do list. Now, another thing you don't want to separate from this is your journal. So let's talk about that. Your journal is just a task for the day. Yes, it's a fun task, but it's a task. Working out is a task. Going to see your friends is a task. Journaling is a task. Again, your day is your to-do list. To-do lists are not a bad thing. It is just what you're doing that day. So let's create the journal that is dynamic. We're going to click on the drop down here and we're going to click on new template. Then we'll click on this to open in full page and I'll call this weekly journal. Now what we wanna do is show the database that we just created, but only show the task that we've completed. So we're going to do forward slash data and click on table view. Now this time we are not going to click on new database. We actually want to select the database that we just created. So I can see here that that database is showing up at the top for me, it's called to do. If it's not showing up for you, then you can search for it here. So I'll just click on this one. Now what we can do is copy an existing view. So what we'll do to make this easy is copy the task list. So I'll click on that. And now I'll just close this. Now, because we copied that view, you can see here the filter is blue saying that there is a filter here. We now want to change this from the status is empty to the status is not empty. So now we're seeing any tasks that are done and have moved the needle. So if I tick this in and say that is the fourth, and I'll actually just change this to the third. Now we need one more setting to make this work because right now we're going to see every single task we've ever done in the past, which is going to be very overwhelming. So I'm going to click on these three dots. I'm going to click on layout and this show database title. First, I'm just going to turn that off. I'm then going to click on the cross and I'm going to rename task list, rename this to this week's tasks. Now we want to add a filter that is only showing us tasks for the past seven days that have been completed. So we have the completed part of that formula, which is this bit. So now we want to say only show us stuff for the past week. So we're going to do add filter date where start date is relative to today for this week. So now you can see it is only showing us this week's worth of tasks. Now, if you only want to do this exercise once a month, then you can change this from this week to this month. But now you can see we have these filters in place. And if I click on this filter button here, we still have them in place. We're just not seeing them up here. So I click on that. So now if you have any questions that you wanna ask yourself every week or every month, you can write them in here. Looking at the tasks I completed above, do I feel like I achieved enough? This is an example. You can add as many as you want. Again, we are in the template for this. So now if we go back to the main page, I'll just rename this from dynamic journal to dashboard. So if I click on month here and let's say it is time to journal, what I'll do is click on the plus here and you can see that weekly journal shows up. So I'll just click on that 
And now I can see this week's tasks, which are showing up here. And the question, looking at these tasks I completed above, do I feel like I achieved enough? So if I just add in some random ones here, random thing, and then I make sure that these tasks are completed. So I change the status to done and I change random to done because again, the journaling is only showing us stuff that we've actually completed. We don't want to see tasks that we never did. So then if we go back to the weekly journal and open that up, you can see here that thing and random are showing up. And then what I can do here is say, oh, let's say that this random task really helped me and it really moved the needle. I can change it from done to move the needle. Going through my task list and assessing on which tasks have actually moved the needle has been one of the most important exercises that I've done. I do this at the end of every single month and I've almost made this into a game for myself where I'm trying to beat the previous month's percentage of tasks that moved the needle and try to get a higher percentage for this month. I cannot recommend doing this enough. You will pick up on patterns on tasks that you're doing that are a waste of time and you will pick up on tasks that you're doing that actually matter. So you know you should prioritize doing more of those kind of tasks. Now the last thing to a dashboard like this is having a place where we can see all of the tasks that move the needle. So here I'm going to do forward slash and click on page. Let's call this move the needle. And on this page, we want to see the same database again. So forward slash data, click on table view. And I'll click on the to-do database or you'll click on whatever you call the database. Again, if you can't find it, you'll just search up here. So I'll click on to-do. I'll copy this existing view task list, close that. And here we're going to change the filter. So we don't want it to be status is empty. What we want is where status is and then we're going to tick and move the needle. Here we only want to see stuff that has moved the needle. So you can go to this page and see a list of every single task that you've done that has actually moved the needle. So we might want to remove the to-do here, click on layout, show database title, rename task list, move the needle. So we have our move the needle page. And here I have a task list of all my uncompleted tasks, blah, blah, blah. And if the task is complete and I say done, you can see it gets removed from here. If you found this way of thinking about Notion useful, you will love my headquarters template. Click on this video here to have a look. Or if you're a content creator, then click on this video here.